Are you in Isaiah chapter 22? I want you to stand with me if you're able, if you can. I'm going to read a couple of verses. Isaiah chapter 22. I want to read verse 20. And then I want to read verse 23. And then I want to read verse 24. He said in verse 20, And it shall come to pass in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah. This is the individual that he is going to be speaking of, Eliakim. Look at verse 23. And I will fasten him, Eliakim, I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. And he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. And what are they going to do with this nail? And they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you, Lord, for how you have no doubt brought us here together. I pray, Lord, that you would bring my mind under arrest, that my words would be obedient to you, that I would say nothing that wouldn't be a help, but everything that is said and preached today would be honoring to you. God, help me. I, I'm leaning on you, and I'm trusting you for clarity and guidance. Father, bless every person that's here. Give them ears to hear and hearts to understand. I'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. You can be seated. I get to preach to the choir again today. They're down one. Somebody couldn't handle hard preaching. Amen. That's all right. I want to talk to you about this comparison in verse 23 where he says that Eliakim, this man, is compared to a nail in a sure place. He said, I'm going to take Eliakim and I'm going to fasten him as I would a nail. I'm going to put him in a solid place and then I'm going to hang upon him the glory of his father's kingdom. I want to talk to you about that nail. Now, I've got a couple in my hand here, and if you're past the front row or over 30, you can't see them. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Just trust me, there is one or two in my hand. <laughs> if you're on the front row and don't see these, take this as a sign to call your optometrist, okay? But he said, I'm going to take Eliakim and I'm going to use him like a nail. And I think there is a comparative ministry in the function of a nail and the life of a believer. I want you to notice, first of all, that a nail is developed. It is developed. I need an amen right here. Nails don't grow on trees. There's not a nail vineyard somewhere where they come to ripeness and fall off a limb. Nails are primarily developed by mining ore out of the earth. It is mined, it is brought out of the earth. It is then placed in a cauldron where it is boiled, where it is brought to a liquid state and in that boiling process, that smelting process, everything that is in the ore that is not beneficial to it, it is removed from that liquid ore or that iron. There are things, help me right here, there are things in its natural state that are not beneficial to its strength. And it has to be heated up and in that heating process, it is being purified and developed. Somebody give me a good amen right here. God will take you like you are. But He'll not leave you like you came. You may have shown up here today and sin is absolutely wrecking your life. 
praise God, you're in the right place. We don't give breathalyzers at the top of the gate. We're not drug testing in the foyer. We want you to come no matter what you are going through, no matter what's going through you, you are in the right place. He will take you just like you are. And you are loved here. You are accepted here. But I got to give you a warning. You won't be here long. And the flame is going to fire up under your pew. And you're going to realize that God not only loves you like you are, but He wants to change you into what He wants you to be. And there'll be days, come on, some of y'all that's been here a minute, help me preach. There'll be days when you leave here and you'll just swear up and down that somebody has told the preacher all about how you've been living. I've had people wouldn't even shake my hand on the way out. They thought somebody had given me the down low on them. Well, let me just give you a little, a little pro tip. When that happens where you're sitting, just smile and act like it ain't happening and ain't nobody going to know but you and the Holy Ghost. Because I, I don't have time to get the weekly report on your sin. I'm too busy trying to keep myself right with God. But I have found that when He saves us, He will begin a process of removing things from our life that are not honoring to Him and they're not helpful to us. And oftentimes that'll happen in the Word of God. It'll happen in your prayer time. It'll happen through preaching. God will put His finger on something and say, I love you, but you would be so much stronger if this wasn't in your life. I could use you more if you were free of this. That nail, I should have painted these orange. I really should have. That nail has to be purified, that ore. It is then poured into a mold or a form. And often it's in long form and they'll then stamp them out. But it is a process, watch now, it is a process of developing that raw material into the image that is going to make it useful in the carpenter's hand. The Bible tells us that we are to be molded into the likeness of Christ. We're not supposed to look like one another. Can't you thank God for that? <laughs> let me, let me, some of y'all said that with a little, you know, little flair, like it was, he was thinking about somebody in particular. <laughs> Makes me hesitant to say my next one. We're not supposed to be made in the image of the preacher. Just everybody say amen, so I'll think there's not one or two after me, you know, out to get me. There is one image that that nail is supposed to be like. And that image is stamped upon that iron. And it is God's will that we be formed to the image of His Son. He doesn't need a bunch of you. He doesn't need a bunch of me. He needs a bunch of Him. And He is molding us into His image. That nail is developed. After that nail is developed, it it will then be placed in a box. That box will go to the hardware store. And then it is purchased based upon the need that it will be used for. When that nail is then in the hand of the one that is going to use it. Watch me now. You cannot sweet talk that nail into placing itself in the wall. Come on now. It's not going to hurt. If you just help, it goes so much easier. The nail, watch this. Hallelujah. It has to be placed in the hand of the carpenter. And I want to tell you that if God is ever going to do anything with us, it'll be with His hand on our life. Can I preach a minute right here? You can have a great job, but if you don't have God's hand on your life, you don't know what you're missing. 
You can have the nicest house in the county. You can have the newest truck that they make. You can have a family that is picture perfect. But all of that is empty without God's hand on your life. And I want to say a word to Greater Life Baptist Church. Thank God for what he's doing here. Thank God for his blessing that he's pouring out here. There's 28 people right now listening and watching next door. There's a nursery full of babies. There's a little class full of toddlers. There's a children's church right now, 7 to 10, that's probably in overflow themselves. And God has been good to us. But don't ever start thinking for a minute that it is us. It is something we have done. Oh no, if you see anything good around here, it's the hand of God on the mail. He will reach in that box and with his hand pull out that nail. How many of you know that the nail will never do anything sitting in the box? Matter of fact, I I, I guess I'm not getting a bigger hammer. I'm getting my water. (laughs) I guess we could really almost illustrate this building as a nail box this morning. All the nails hanging out in the box. And this is a good place to be with the rest of the nails. And we testify about the heat that melted as we can testify about the form that is shaping us. But oh, things get real when the lid comes off and the hand comes in to remove us for His service. And I'm not fussing at you this morning. I'll let the Holy Ghost do that. But if all you ever want to do is hang out in the box, you're missing the point of being a nail. There's a lot more to this than looking shiny in the box. I want to be in the hand of God. He did not develop me just to grow old in the box. He developed me that He might use me for a specific purpose. And when that nail is chosen, here's my second little point, it is placed by being driven. You cannot talk it into getting on or in the wall. It has to be driven with force. And that is not, that is not a fun process. I will admit to you, I went behind the barn, picked this up today, and my inner hacksaw Jim Duggan came out immediately. I just got to confess that. Sorry, if you don't know who that is, This may not be the church for you. I'm just telling you, you may want to keep shopping. But that nail, in order to be placed, it must be driven. It must be forced into its proper place. And how many of you can testify that when the hammer of God starts coming down on your little bony Baptist head, it is not always a fun experience. But the nail will never be driven unless there is force applied. I think sometimes God puts us in difficult situations. Not because He is wanting to hurt us, but because He's wanting to use us. And we feel the pressure. We feel the pounding. We feel the pain of God driving us into His will. And and if nails could talk, that wouldn't... I don't know if it would have testified, but it would have said something out loud. It's not fun. Anybody ever been there where God was pushing you, where God was forcing you, and it was not fun, but it was part of His plan to get you in the place that He could use you best for His honor and for His glory. I have felt the hand of God in my life driving me 
into His will. Wouldn't it be good if He could just sweet talk us into it? Wouldn't it be good if there was an easier way? But what God does best, He often does with pressure applied in our lives. I'll say this and I'll hustle along. Everyone that God uses goes through that driving process. John the Baptist, the greatest outside of Christ to ever walk among men. That was Jesus' words about John. That was his endorsement of John. But John was born and then God put him in the wilderness. And in the wilderness, he got alone with God. And out of a difficult situation, he comes out of that wilderness full of fire and blazing a trail for Christ to follow him down. Everyone God uses goes through the driving process. Moses was born into the lap of luxury, placed there by God's sovereign hand into Pharaoh's palace. But God said, I can't use him sitting in the box. I'm going to have to put him in the wilderness. And in the wilderness for 40 years, God was driving him with the hammer of his persistent will. Everyone God uses goes through a driving experience where the pressure places us deeper into the will of God. When the nail is driven, it now has a purpose. And uh, that purpose in our text is found in verse number 24. He said, and they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house. The nail, oh, I'm about to preach right here. The nail is not the centerpiece of the room. Now, I love our little country house, and uh, Miss Amy does a good job of decorating it and keeping it homey feeling, and I love it. I remember when we first got married, we didn't have nothing. And we were living in a little single wide trailer about the size of this set of pews right here. And uh, that's, that's a pretty, uh, you know, rough way to start getting married. That place wasn't even big enough to have a good fight in. <laughs> you need a house at least big enough to fight in. Can I get an amen? I mean, you, you, you had to get things right because you couldn't quit seeing each other. You had to remedy it. Wasn't nowhere to go and be mad. I remember she started decorating that place and man, she got in, you know, Martha Stewart gear and she's de- there was a point in time there, you take a nap on the couch, you're liable to wake up with a doily on your head. She's decorating everything. And praise the Lord, we've, we've subdued that a little bit. But nobody's ever walked in our house and said, oh my goodness, I love what you've done with that nail. Now, if you come over and say that, I'm going to be really concerned about you as a person in general. No one is ever impressed by the nail. No one is ever focused on the nail. The nail is not the centerpiece. The nail is not what is supposed to captivate our eyes or our attention. The nail is driven, watch now, so that it can be decorated. This particular cross was made by a friend of mine out in Washington State. He lives there uh, on the Idaho-Washington State border. I was with him and we were turkey hunting together out there and he had one of these in his church, a large one. And I asked him if he would make me one. This is black walnut and it's beautiful and every time I look at this, I, it's been in the foyer, I requested it in here this morning 
because this young man was saved in a tent meeting I was preaching in South Carolina. It's a great story, 13, 30 seconds. Him and his wife was fighting. He was on the front porch of their house almost a half mile from the tent revival. He heard my big loud mouth a half mile away, got in his car, came to the tent revival, got saved, got called to preach, and God sent him to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho to pastor a church. How, how about that? He made me this cross. And I, when I look at it, I think about him, and I think about how God saved him and touched him. And it's not the nail that we're supposed to see. It's the decoration that goes on that nail. I think too many of us are prone to want the attention, the glory, the applause, the pat on the back for people to come by and tell us how great we are. Can I tell you something? If you're getting that, you're doing it wrong. Because God, hey glory, He did not pull us out of this world. He did not save us and begin a work of sanctification. He did not develop us. He did not drive us so that people would come by and brag on us. He did all of that so people would see Him instead of us. Man, I'm glad that you're here today and I hope you come back next Sunday or Thursday at 7. But if you leave here today and say, man, what a church, we've missed it. If you leave here today and say, man, what singing, we've missed it. If you leave here today and say, ooh, what a message, in some way we've missed it. Because the church, the singing, the sermon, it's not supposed to draw attention to the nail. It's supposed to draw attention to what's hanging on the nail. And I want to be decorated with the glory of God. (laughs) I know me enough to know I don't want you looking at this nail too hard. Because you'll be disappointed But if you can see what God has done to me. Come on somebody. If you can see what God's doing for me. If you can see what He has put on me. I'll gladly hide behind that. And hold up His decoration. 